putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Kevin Jackson here. So a guy t- tweeted this out. He says, we need to stop calling the left liberals. They truly meet all the tenets, tenets of communist. They want to change the Constitution. They want to eradicate free speech and all dissent. They want to control you, your life, your career, your health care. Oppose capitalism in all forms. They're communists. By the way, I talked about Jerry Brown. He sneaked something in last Friday on gun control. He said teachers can no longer fire back, shoot back if they're being shot at. Sneak that little bill in. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. The idea that the Jerry Brown sneaks in something that says you can't protect yourself. I want you to think about the most basic right. Your right to say, I want to exist. I want to live. That is the that is, by the way, a God given right. That is something inside of you. Put let somebody put a pillow over your head. You know what you do? You you fight like crazy. You don't lay there and go, oh, somebody's trying to kill me. Put a pillow over my head. You flail, you kick, you look for that breath. That little 60 seconds of air that's left inside of your body becomes massively important. Because that's it. If you don't fight back, that's the end. Of you. That's the end. And these guys are looking for every opportunity to take away that air. They want to stop your voice. They want to stop you from having a gun to protect your voice. And, and you could go down the line, but from the Fourth Amendment to the just whatever amendments we have to the Constitution, whatever constitutional rights that you have. They want to get rid of them. It was funny. Some leftist said something about it's my constitutional right to an abortion. <laughs> and I, was, I think it was what she was saying. I was like, you've got this is how distorted things have become on the left. They believe they have a constitutional right for this. You know what's funny? How they use every opportunity, this this backfire of using kids for gun control. They continue this full court press for one reason and one reason only. They are nuts. They are gun control freaks. They are gun control nuts. That is the only way. When you describe them, if you say, well, you know, the gun control lobby or the gun control you know, people or what. They are gun control freaks and nuts. That is the only way to describe them. You put them in a life or death situation. They would pick up a gun and limp with their little limp wrist and and they'd shoot in 50 different directions because they have no idea how to fire a firearm. But they would grab it in an instant to save their lives. But they won't practice. They won't go find out what guns are about. They won't weaponize in that respect. They will they, they will pretend that the cops are there to help you. By the way, the same cops that they say want to beat up black folks. Their tactics are the same folks, no matter how they go after whatever rights you have. High school kids are the new oppressed group. That's what I want you to understand. We've gone from women in the suffrage movement to blacks in, in a, you know, freeing of the slaves, which by the way, all legit stuff leading up to present day America where neither women nor blacks nor Latinos nor Muslims nor immigrants or anybody else is oppressed. There is no oppression in America outside of the normal day to day life of human beings. And most of the oppressive interactions left. This won't tell you this, but you're getting your education from the Kevin Jackson show. KJ Most oppression that occurs in America and around the world occurs at the hand of leftists. See, you and I, we're used to giving people helping hands. We see somebody who's willing to work hard, perform, etc., and we elevate them. If the left sees somebody willing to work hard and potentially could pass them, they cut them off at the knees. And if they need to, they'll cut them off at the waist, and eventually they'll cut them off at the neck. You will be silenced. You will not exceed beyond me. Jealousy kicks in. All the seven deadly sins (laughs) at some point kick in with the left. You and I see a person who's trying to get back. I'll give you an example. We'll see a person trying to lose weight and we go, way to go. Look at that. You know, I see 600 pound life. I see those big people working hard. I saw this one lady. She was 650 pounds, 
I talked about this the other day. She's she's climbing up uh, from number one, walking without a not even a wheelchair. She's slinging these big old saddlebags around, you know, her buttocks just swaying in the wind, man. 650 pounds, give or take. And she's putting herself, lifting herself up into a pickup. I'm talking about prying her body inside of it. You you couldn't get a, a sheet of paper <laughs> in there once she was in there. And she drove home, got out of that vehicle, and went into her house carrying 650 pounds around. Let me put it to you this way. I, I'm I'm nowhere near that. You'd have to pa- pack on uh, at least 250 pounds on me and then say, Kevin, go walk around all day. Not all day because she didn't walk around all day, but just take that weight and carry it around from location to location and just have. I got a, a 30 pound vest that I train in. It's loaded with lead and I'll do pull ups and walk around in that vest and stuff like that. Let me tell you. You do an hour in that vest with 30 pounds and you're like, whoa, you take it off. You think you can float. This woman is packing 250. I'm sorry, 450 pounds more weight than the average man. And she walks around and you know what? I'm cheering her. I'm going, look at that big girl. Go. I'm looking for the positives. I'm saying to myself, wait till she loses weight. Wait till she's down to 170 pounds. She has dropped 480 pounds, man. I mean, she's down to something reasonable. And, you know, and and gets rid of the skin. I don't know what she's going to look like, but what is she going to feel like? If her heart and her muscle structure and her bone structure will let her carry that much weight, She's going to, she, they, they may have to put, she's going to be like a helium balloon <laughs> She'll be walking around six inches above the ground. But here's my point to all of this. We look for stuff to feel good about in people. I don't look at her and go, look at that grotesquely overweight woman. I don't think, but the left will ridicule her. They will give her all the reasons that she cannot succeed and why she shouldn't succeed and all that. And I'm sitting there going, you can do it. And I hope you do it. And do you understand where you will be when you do it? We inspire people. Give them hope. The left take these high school kids who are at the point of their lives where, you know, they should be enjoying life and looking forward to the future. And they go, no, 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 you're oppressed. You could be shot. You know, by the way, we didn't do anything for you over the period of time where Obama watched this increase occur. Not just in your schools, but in general, in society. Not only can you be shot in your schools, you could be blown up at a at a uh, uh, this marathon. You could be shot at your Christmas party. You could be shot at a gay nightclub. You could be shot in society in general or run over by a truck while you're riding bikes. But don't feel, you know, you're oppressed. They did nothing to stop it. I mean, how many school shootings occur now each year? That's something Trump inherited. Why do schools teach about Islam, folks, when there are terror attacks? They actually increase their ideas around multiculturalization after we've been attacked by Muslims. They go into schools and say, don't don't get in this bias mode of Muslims just because they killed a bunch of people in San Bernardino, just because they went into a gay nightclub. By the way, they killed Christians at a Christmas party. They killed gay people at a gay nightclub. But don't be, don't believe the hype on Islam. Don't believe it. It's still a religion of peace. It's a good people. They go in the schools and reinforce the good nature of Islam after an attack. But what do they do about guns? Do they go into the school and reinforce the idea that, you know, had we had more protection in the school, things would have been good. If we had more guns in the school, it, no, because that would solve the problem. If they went into schools and told you the truth about Islam, you wouldn't be asked. Parent, there's no person that would go teach me more about this religion of death. But if you told the truth about guns, kids would go. What's the big deal? It's the way we grew up. In case you missed it, folks, I discuss why Democrats fight against armed guards in schools. It's very simple. They know it works. 
And listen, these kids said they would fear their teachers being armed. They had these kids on CNN. Nonsense. Abject nonsense. Are these kids afraid when they go into the airport and there's armed security there? In big cities, kids walk among armed security all the time. There's cops floating around everywhere. They aren't scared then. Why are they scared, supposedly, only when they're in the confines of their schools? I think you know the answer. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.